Christianity is the world's most persecuted religion, and yet many people have little idea of the scale of the crisis. For many years, the Charity Aid to the Church in Need, ACN, has provided a voice for these voiceless Christians. Persecuted and Forgotten? A report on Christians oppressed for their faith presents the findings of ACN's ongoing research, assessing recent patterns of hatred and discrimination. Covering the period from July 2017 to July 2019, this edition focuses on key developments in 12 countries where the suffering of Christians is particularly severe. In the Middle East, after the military defeat of ISIS in 2017, the scale of violence against Christians is much reduced. But evidence suggests that the retreating Islamists have left behind a legacy of increased hostility towards Christians stoked by militants operating underground. Genocide, extreme poverty, and Islamism have decimated Christian communities in Iraq and Syria. In some major towns and cities, the countdown to Christianity's disappearance is ticking ever louder. In parts of Africa, from Nigeria in the west to Madagascar in the east, Islamists are seeking to eliminate Christianity, using violence in some places and coercion in others. While Nigeria is the country where the most Christians are killed, Islamist fundamentalist attacks on Christians happen time and again, in Burkina Faso and in the Central African Republic. In other parts of Africa, like Sudan, Morocco, or Eritrea, the main threat to Christians comes from the state, with renewed acts of repression. Two of the most serious attacks against Christians carried out by Islamist militia in the reporting period took place in Sri Lanka and the Philippines, leaving hundreds of people wounded and killed. Indeed, the situation for Christians has deteriorated most in South and East Asia. In this region, a growing nationalism and state authoritarianism emerge as the main drivers of Christian persecution. Previously, North Korea, where Christians are routinely imprisoned in labor camps, was identified as the worst place in the world to be a Christian. The situation continues to be so bad that it can scarcely get any worse. In India, the principal threat to Christianity comes from Hindutva nationalism. More than 1,000 attacks on Christians have been reported and more than 100 churches closed. Militants and state officials have stepped up a campaign of intimidation against Christians. Hindu extremist attacks increased also in neighboring Sri Lanka, where both Christians and Muslims were targeted. In China, for Christians and other minorities, the period under review saw a marked deterioration in human rights. Even though the Vatican signed a provisional agreement with China, allowing the regime a say in Episcopal appointments, the repression of the Catholic Church has markedly increased. In Pakistan, an alarming increase in incidents of violence against the faith groups has been recorded from both the state and non-state actors many of them influenced by the Taliban in neighboring Afghanistan. Notwithstanding, a massive breakthrough with the acquittal of Asia Bibi, a Christian woman on death row for alleged blasphemy, the government fails to tackle the growing climate of intolerance towards minorities. Initiatives by the international community in response to the persecution of Christians emerged as a major theme during the reporting period. In response to mounting concern that the West has largely ignored Christian persecution, the international community has shown unprecedented engagement with the topic over the past two years. Whatever good may come out of initiatives by the international community, however, will take time to materialize. Facing continued violent attacks, forced exodus, and possible extinction, Christians more than ever do not have time to wait. Be it in Iraq or Syria or elsewhere, future historians may say that it was yet another case of too little, too late.
Whatever challenges the future holds, Aid to the Church in Need remains committed to helping Christians not only to survive persecution, but also to give witness to their faith. Their testimony of hope against all the odds is the greatest source of inspiration for all those dedicated to helping them.